Hi everyone, so I'm Titus and welcome back to my channel. So today I'll be talking about um, my prison experience. So some of you may or may not know about my imprisonment the last couple of weeks. So actually I've been in prison for three weeks and it wasn't the best experience. Uh, I'm gonna share with you what uh, I did there and how is it like and so actually I posted an Instagram story here. Here are some questions that you guys are very interested to know the answer. So let me backtrack the whole story. So how did I end up in prison? As you guys know, I'm an OnlyFans creator. I've been doing OnlyFans since April 2021 to October 2021 so like 6 months so during that period I think it was fine I did some obscene content this kind of content is very common on OnlyFans so on October 2021 there was a report made by a man who said that his niece his 12 year old niece had access to my content so he made a police report about that so the police investigated the case and came to my house somewhere around October 2021 to investigate this you know cause it's like it's illegal to like distribute this kind of content to minors but just to make it clear I only distribute such content on OnlyFans and nowhere else I do not know how the the minor might have access to my content totally do not want anyone else other uh, than intended willing adults on my OnlyFans page to receive such content so in October they came to my house investigated me so I, I went through like back and forth with police, like I only like uh, surrendered my phone to them, surrendered my OnlyFans account to them. They were investigating for two months. So during this period, I also breached the police order to not access my OnlyFans account. I was tempted by greed, and I was also a uh, very desperate at the point of time. Back then, I had some liabilities for a new car, just um, moving to a new place. I have like some uh, had pay for debts and like sustain a lifestyle. But looking back, I believe I was uh, tempted by greed, which uh, made me breach the police order. I was told that. The, this kind of police investigation would take months and not being able to assess my OnlyFans account for months which was at that point my main source of income was basically impossible you know when I came back for the police station I requested OnlyFans for a new email and login because I wanted to withdraw the money in my OnlyFans account that's why I breached the police order so fast forward uh, two months later in December they contacted me again I went down to the police station they explained to me and asked me if I breached the order I told them I had to do so because I had some bills to pay and they told me that they were going to arrest me and charge me for posting up obscene content only fans as well as like breaching the police order so this case was like over the news it was picked up by the local media and subsequently some other media outside of Singapore also reported this that's how my case kind of blew up as I'm filming this November 2022 so it's been almost a year since that happened I was sentenced to a 3 weeks jail and a $3,000 fine I just finished having my sentence and I'm free now I'm free of all my legal troubles so we can kind of put that chapter to an end but honestly I'm very happy that this case is finally over because for the past year it's been very traumatizing and it's been in my head all the time I can't really focus on something I can't really do something because at the back of my head I was thinking like when am I gonna be done with this court case or legal trouble it's kind of like a limitation to what I can do that's why I've been very stressed and very uh, not in the best spot I would say the most popular question I got was did you ever drop your soap? so actually uh, in prison we are given like a small little coin size of soap for like the first seven days because you have to be isolated in prison like do like blood tests, HIV tests, COVID tests in order to be like mixed with like the other inmates because I was like uh, sentenced to three weeks jail so three weeks after remission it becomes two weeks so like 14 days uh, depending on your good behaviour so you'll be released early if you, you are good and nice in prison so actually I dropped the soap a couple of times because it's very slippery for the first 7 days I was in the cell probably the size of like a toilet and you can't see outside so you can you get like a bit of sunlight going in but you can't see the sun so you can't see outside at all you gotta drink water from the same tap do everything there so again like a small pot of soap to like wash your face wash your hair wash your body to do everything with it so after 7 days I was transferred out to 8 men cell so the cell size is probably double of what I stayed at first but there was like 7 other people living with me in the cell so I think there's a misconception of like dropping a soap in Singapore prison I don't think it's very common that you might get uh, someone might do something if you drop a soap because uh, you are sentenced to like weeks of jail most of them they are like pretty uh, chill they just want to do their time and get out if you do something to another inmate it's considered another crime so uh, it might be put in the punishment cell or even worse extend your stay or like might get caning if you do something wrong as you guys know, there's like this other YouTuber that has also been in jail. So uh, Dikosh was actually in the cell beside me. 
So I was in cell 619, so I was in like 616 or something. So I kind of like can talk to him through like the, the van. So um, I mean it's nice to see someone there that you kind of know. I mean from the same industry. I mean, he's another YouTuber. He's, um, he's bought now and it's probably going to come out next year. But I can tell that he's very uh, repentful and I think he's re he regrets his action and he's kind of paying the price for it now. But I'll leave that to him to talk about it in the future because it's not my story to tell. So uh, someone else said, uh, your skin is so flawless. Drop that prison skincare vestie. I kind of had a little breakout in prison because I was only given one towel. No, one towel every, every week. So like the same towel to wipe my sweat, shower and everything. And like the same bar also. Imagine like using the same uh, bar also. There's no like hygiene, you know. So of course like I, I kind of like have some pimples when I came out of here. But I'm trying to clear that now. So actually most people are very curious why don't I have to shave my head. So for uh, Singapore prison services, if you're in the prison for like less than 30 days, you don't have to shave your head. If you are sentenced more than 30 days, you shave head once every week. And for the last month you're inside of prison, you do get to keep your hair long. So you kind of get to grow your hair in the last month. So actually I received a lot of like uh, replies saying we welcome back. So like thank you guys so much for that. I appreciate all the concern and care I've been receiving during this period. And I appreciate that a lot. Thank you. Before I continue this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will appreciate so much more. So subscribe down below. How was it like? So we are given like, okay so every inmate, we kind of wear like a white t-shirt and like blue pants so kind of similar to this but like not <laughs> but like lower quality and that uh, we're, we're given like transparent slippers to wear so every inmate got a box inside there's like two blankets and like draw mat bucket two bars also and cup to drink water so every inmate is like standardized and in Singapore prison you don't sleep on a bed you sleep on the floor so it's kind of hard you can sleep on the hard floor every day and it's cold there's no fan in the prison there's only like some air vents which is like not that strong considering there's like many other people in the cell. So how's the food? Review please. So the food there was pretty bad. It's, it's not good at all. It's just plain. So the nutrients are like very high in carbs, very low in protein and just barely enough to uh, keep us to, to keep us going I guess. Let me show you guys an example. So like breakfast, breakfast is like 8 a.m. So they give us like two pieces of bread. So like total four two slices together it's like sometimes it's butter sometimes it's strawberry jam sometimes it's like hazelnut but it's not sweet so it's very plain it's not like the nutella or something it's like worse so you give us that for breakfast and so sometimes tea or coffee so that will be breakfast at 8 a.m then 12 noon our lunch usually will be like plain white rice very hard white rice with like some sauce some vegetable and like one source of protein so like the worst was like rice with cabbage and one boiled egg, that's all. And like a drizzle of sauce. So like that's what I eat for lunch. It's, it's like very plain, not very, not the best lunch. So for dinner, it will be at like 5 p.m. That's when they will serve us uh, chicken, uh, sometimes sardine or tofu. It's not that great, it's just very plain. So the sleeping arrangement was... Uh, okay, you guys imagine like a small room, right? then like egg eight guys to sleep there side by side so it's like we're like very close to each other we're gonna sleep in like a position where we don't uh barely enough space to like just turn it around so we'll sleep on the floor we use like the blankets they give as like um, a pillow because it's impossible to sleep on the floor it's so hard and so cold on the floor so we use that and like yeah imagine sleeping on the floor for like uh three weeks is quite bad so um actually in Singapore prison they gave us like a tablet we didn't have like 90 minutes access for the tablet the tablet with the internet you can like write e-letters and send to our families sorry uh four times per month um cheryl my wife has been like sending me e-letters every day so i reply them uh once in a while and that's like the only source of communication you get in prison i, I appreciate her for doing that it kind of helps with our mental health because that's the only thing that keeps me going in there it's not it's not the best scenario to be in and uh, it kind of gets your head when you're in prison and you can't even go for a walk I said at night you want to go for a walk you can't even do that you just lock it in the cell you're, you, you get depressed it will affect you mentally so you kind of have to find that drive to get used to the prison life for that period you're sitting and I am grateful for Cheryl for being there for me waiting for me so as I know um, you're allowed like two visits a month either like a 30 minute televisit like a, kind of like a zoom meeting or like a 20 minute face-to-face -face visit 
So actually I did both. So the tele visit was like was like much easier because it was just like um, in the prison cell. So like the cell like, you can't see outside. There'll be a door locked and, and like, blocking it. So it's like not like the bars kind of thing. It's it's just like a, a blue door, then they'll block everything. Then there'll be like a spy hole for like officers to check on you. So we we'll go down the the cell to like the main area. There'll be like some uh, you can have private room to, to chat with your visitor. Or if you have a face to face visit, so they have to apply online through a sync pass and like walk all the way to the main entrance or something. That there will be like a, a glass panel there to speak to your visitor. That's kind of how it works. So another question is, uh, do you sleep well? So actually, uh, I didn't really sleep well because uh, it kind of gets you. You won't be in a good mood after you come to prison, you know. Because the whole process, like after your you were surrounded yourself in court, you'll be handcuffed like like uh, to the back. And cuff will be like extended to your legs, so it's like a full cuff. So I'll be escorted down to like the holding cell for like a couple hours until like 6 p.m. So back then I was kind of sick, I was coughing a little, so I told the officer. So I was, when I was being transported, I was like in this van. So this van had like a single unit. So for the whole 30 minutes, you'll be sitting like this, handcuffed to your legs and cuff at the back, and there's another cuff around your waist area, and there's like cameras all around you, and you can't even see outside. So that was like my experience for like the transportation from state court to prison. Actually, in a grand prison, you can request for some books. So it's the first time I'm quite amazed at myself because it's the only thing I can do at that point of time. So it's the first time I read so many, so much, so many books because I'm not already a bookworm. I don't really read books. But after this uh, whole prison experience, I got some new books to read and kind of find like a, a zone for myself. And um, I guess this is like a takeaway for me. Yeah, I start read, started reading more books. So I guess, um, what was the biggest lesson you learned from being in prison? So, um, firstly, don't be in prison. Obey the law, appreciate things you have, and treasure your time, live in the moment. So I know it's a lot of lessons. When I was in prison, I had nothing, and I kind of, I had like cold showers, uh, plain food, I don't even have a bed to sleep on, no privacy, no walking space, uh, no access to anything, had nothing. So it does like, you're given what prison gives you. You can't request for anything else. So I appreciate the things I have. Like the house I live in, the bed I sleep on every night, the, shower, the warm shower I take every day, the nice food I have, the nice friends and contact, and the nice family members that care about me, friends that care about me, my pets that are here for me all the time. I appreciate these little things so much more because uh, it's all part of life. And eventually I would, uh, all of them will be gone one day, so I appreciate things while they last and live in the moment. Because honestly, time is very relative. And 14 days is fast if you're having fun. But if you're in prison and time is so slow, it feels like a month, you know? Time passes so much slower. So I'm reading this from like the message I sent Cheryl. So I was reading so many books, quoting from the books to Cheryl. Time is relative. I know I'm not the first person to realize it, and far from the most famous. And my realization had nothing to do with the energy or the mass or the speed of light or Einstein might have postulated. Rather, it has to do with the drag of hours while I wait to see my loved ones. <laughs> so I said this kind of stuff to her, you know, quote from books. And then she thought I was like possessed or something. Because <laughs> like, since when do I say this kind of stuff, you know? I mean, that was the only thing I could like think of because I read some a lot of books and I just quote things from books. So I guess that's a good thing you get in prison. You get to you get more time, alone time to read books. That being said, I I hope that I'll never go back to there again. As I hope this will be like a lesson learned for me. And I hope that my viewers watching this can kinda of like understand more about the how prison works and stay out of trouble. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe down below and leave a comment if you have anything to say. See you guys in the next one. Bye.